So what's going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome to your fifth intermediate JavaScript video in which we're going to discuss about prototypal inheritance model in JavaScript, what it is, how it works. Let's get into it. So what we have in JavaScript is basically something known as prototypal, prototypal inheritance model. This another model you might have heard of that is object oriented model. So in object oriented model, what you usually have is classes, then some subclasses which are inherited from parent classes, and then you create objects of those classes and basically pretty much access the methods and stuff, all that regular stuff. With JavaScript, what we have is not object oriented model of inheritance, but prototypal inheritance model. How does it differ? Let me show you. So let's just create a function object. Uh, let's just create a function, sorry, not a function object. Um, let's say it's pizza because we love pizza, right? Um, let's say I get to a parameter of, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say type. And we're just gonna say this dot type is type, right? Down here, I'm gonna create a pizza my pizza is new pizza and you know there's always some extra cheese and I'm just gonna console log my pizza to see what's happening so we see that my pizza has extra cheese which is good right and this, yeah hmm but there's another thing called underscore underscore proto here which is something well what it is well if we take a look at it we see nothing interesting. Well, all that usual stuff. But what the hell is this anyway? You see that in JavaScript, what happens is that almost everything is object. I would say almost here because some things are not, right? So primitive implementations are all, always there in languages, right? But in JavaScript, objects have an inbuilt chain a chain which could be linked to you know you can consider this as a link between extending a class in whoop is kind of same to you know having something in prototypal chain having something in this proto chain by that what i mean is i can actually add something to the prototype of of my pizza so i can say that prototype pizza dot prototype dot uh, you know is shop open is true right and now if i create my pizza 2 and i console log my pizza dot is shop open and i console log my pizza 2 dot is shop open and say no extra cheese here you see, we get true in both the cases. Now see, if I try to modify a shop open to false here, it's safe. We get false here and true here. Obviously that should make sense. But if you take a look at these objects, we see the first one actually includes a shop open equal to false. Because that is, that is how we instructed JavaScript to run code right but the second one how does it get its value it does not have a shop open well if you do not have a value inside your object what javascript does is it's open the prototypal chain the next prototypal chain right and it sees well yeah is shop open is defined here so we're going to get this value you see that is shop open is still defined here inside this prototypal chain but since javascript starts at the top ends at the bottom it finds the value here so it quits it does not really traverses the whole object but in our case we did not have it at the top level so it went one prototypal chain down it saw it and it returned the value all right i think that should make sense for now but what we essentially want is can i somehow modify this value and yes i can because you see i can go to proto object like that my pizza 
refers to this object dot underscore underscore proto i'm inside this chain now and his shop open is false hmm but strangely enough what you should see now that instead of my pizza returning false my pizza 2 also returns false now now why is that let's again take a look at these objects so you see that is shop open is false here also and is shop open false is here also as well why is that okay to understand that first of all we have to understand how do we got this prototypal chain in the first place you see when you created this object new pizza with this new pizza you got the prototypal chain of this function inside both of these objects which shared a common variable named is shop open right now once you try to modify it via my pizza it got into proto which is one chain nested and it modified the shared property which is basically this property you modified it and you set it to false right so what it did is actually it modified not only property access for this one but actually modified it globally for everything so this is the reason you get a shop open false for you know my my pizza too as well that is the reason on a similar way we can have like uh, you know any other variable as well placed on the prototypal chain now you would ask why do we have to like do pizza dot prototype dot is shop open why not just you know this dot is shop open is true well you should obviously see the benefit here uh, not really benefit the loss here you see that now is shop open is something that that should be common across all the customers right shop is either open or shop is either closed for them right but when you create it inside the function you assign that property to every individual object whenever you create it however that is unnecessary right you just need a common property you just need a common property and for a common property you can use the prototypal chain so remember that let's say if you have greet as the method right so greet should be a common method you just need to greet the customer I'm gonna say this dot uh, let's say customer name and type and I'm gonna say this dot name is customer name customer right and I'm gonna say this dot name and how are you you see now greet method is uh what is one mehul and uh, go down you see this dot name is specific to this so we can access this inside our prototypal method itself why not and uh, then how are you basically you see this method is common for both of these objects right so we placed it inside our prototypal chain so as to not create any extra memory usage here right you see this method greed is greed is available here and uh, now we can just pretty much call greet greet and get rid of this hit save you see mehul how are you and godam how are you successfully printed so you see that this right here refers correctly to the object we used remember this from our object our this tutorial mastering this how i call greet and my pizza 2 dot greet as well so as just as a matter of fact i would just like to um get your give you a question so let's say my function is my pizza dot create now tell me the output for this my pizza two tell me the output for this what should be the output would the output be mehul how are you or codam how are you well you see that it is actually codam how are you when you call actually call greet with uh, you know my pizza 2 as the this value now if you don't know why this is the case go ahead and watch my mastering this video um angle uh, arrow functions versus normal functions 
and uh, basically yeah both of these should be sufficient enough for you to understand this right anyway so i think we are pretty much done with prototypal model of inheritance in javascript that is that's it basically the essence the crux the distilled version of prototypal inheritance in javascript if you understand this you understand a lot of part of how javascript inheritance actually works within objects right so yeah i think that's enough for intermediate levels as well and in the next tutorial we're going to take a look at classes hopefully and what what sort of abstraction they bring us and uh, take a look at that so that's all for this video i'll see you then in the next one